And here's yet another extra, um, extra topic that there's not really time for in this class. Uh, were, you to take the, were you to take the traditional class from me on this topic in a classroom, um, we would spend probably three weeks um, or a little less going over Dreamweaver at the end, very end of the class. Dreamweaver is a web authoring software, web page off authoring software. It doesn't do anything you can't do by yourself. Um, it makes your job a little easier in some ways, in some ways a little harder. Of all the different types of this software, it's definitely the most popular. It's um, also a um, uh, not used by a lot of um, uh, professional designers. Um, it does create some code which is somewhat bloated, they would say, and perhaps not very elegant. Um, it can you can usually look at a Dream, Dreamweaver created page, or certainly a, a, if you use their templates and tell that's what it is. But on the other hand, um, there's some really neat things about it, and the, and the software has been improving dramatically. Um, there's some other software like this. Um, like front page, for instance, from Microsoft, and then a number of others too. But by far, Dreamweaver is the most powerful and most common out there. So I think the right thing to do is to learn CSS and HTML as we have from scratch. But now you get to that point where you know it. Now you can look at Dreamweaver and try to evaluate it and decide if you want to use it. Um, and now the other, th other reason to do this tutorial um, is, and first of all, I know you don't have time for it now. So I'm suggesting you take this file and this video will be available to you afterwards through YouTube. Take the uh, zip folder, take this, this uh, giant handout of a, of a PDF also. Take those things and, ha and hold on to them and try them sometime in the future. There's no deadline on this. There's no, um, uh, no um, Dropbox for you to put it in. If you're working on this anytime over the summer or some other time, you want to play with it, you want to work on it, you have any problems or questions, uh, email me. I'll be available. I'll be happy to work with you outside of class time with it. Um, okay, so here we go. Let's um, uh, first take a look at the, the tutorial and the zip file and then a very brief overview of Dreamweaver. And then if you want to continue, you can do it on your own. So one of the things I've given you is this giant PDF file. It goes on and on and on. In fact, it's about, jeez, I don't know, 60, 70 pages long, something like that. It's uh, amazing. Um, so what it really is, though, if you look through it carefully, make it a little bit bigger, it's just a step-by-step -step from part one to part seven of going through everything that you need to do to create this site. Okay, and there's lots of screenshots. This is a new tutorial based on, as you'll see in the instructions, it explains. Um, it's based on Dreamweaver CC 2015, and it probably will be, work fine for somewhat newer versions of CC as they come out. But eventually, perhaps someone will be a little obsolete. Uh, Dreamweaver CC is, def is the, the the newest and best version of the software. Keep in mind now, though, so um, that nothing that Dreamweaver does you can't do manually, and there's nothing that it creates that's proprietary in any way. Um, you simply use it as a different version of Notepad++, and it gives you hints and help and helps you organize yourself differently. Okay, what else do I give you? I give you a zip file. Let's take a look at that. Find my zip file. Um, Oh, here it is. Here's a zip file. Dreamweaver 2017 zip. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, double click in it as I generally like to. Um, you will download this from Moodle and I suggest you take it with you along with this long PDF um, to work on this some other time. Um, I'm going to go copy that out of here and paste it back in here. And what this really is, is a project folder with lots of stuff in it. It's got an originals folder and here's your here's your root folder, Bayside last name. I suggest you do go ahead and rename it. This is in the instructions, but I'll do it right now with perhaps your name 
whatever, so or some date or something like that. And then an originals folder, which has one Word document. I'll open it up now. This will take a moment. You'll see that the, the Word document has um, some of the text in it that you're going to use. Mm, as this, that's opening. Come on, Word. Come on, Word. It's thinking. Sorry for this delay. There it is. Okay, so this is the text you're going to be pasting with instructions and then some links you're going to use. That's all it is, is the text for the site. Okay, and let's look at the other end. Where will you end up? When this gets all gets done, what's this going to look like? Here it is. It's an um, attractive site with a large photo. We call it the hero picture. Some text positioned on it. Um, some links. It has a photo with a CSS filter. How about that? changes black and white to color as a, with a hover um, and here's the really neat thing although it's a nice navigation it's just one page really that you have if I make it smaller well, look what happens and a little bit a little bit narrower oops come on back here you hold on Sorry, it wasn't letting me go narrow enough because I had too many tabs open. In any case, a little bit wider, it looks like this, and it's all shrunk down. It's completely flexible, right? And a little bit narrower. All of a sudden, the page has changed. It's now gone to one column. Some text has been rearranged, and it's got this menu bar, as you would on a tablet or a smartphone. I click on it, and I get a different, a whole different navigation going on. So, it's a pretty neat site, and um, it's got some, some newer technologies and some more, more advanced stuff, and by going through the tutorial, you will learn it. Um, one of the key things, it has at media statements towards the end, which tell the site how to change at different widths in, in the CSS. It says, but at this width, do this. Sort of, that's essentially what it means. Um, it's got a Z-index code in it, which is different. Um, you learn more about absolute positioning and how it works. Okay, so how are you going to do all this? You've got those, that huge tutorial. You've got this uh, folder. The, uh, where is it? Oh, I'm in the originals right now. I showed you the Word documents in there. And what's inside the folder? Well, there's an images file, which just has two images. Um, you'll see they're on the site there, the two images that are there. Um, it's got a styles, empty styles folder. And it's got a JS folder, your first look at JavaScript, which you can edit and look at and understand a little bit how to, how to hack it if you want to. That's interesting. Um, but otherwise, you see no HTML file here, no CSS file. Well, you have to make those all from scratch. Okay, just take a quick look at Dreamweaver then, shall we? This is what Dreamweaver looks like when it opens up. Um, something that you can miss, it's, it's in the instructions, but you can miss it, is the workspace. The workspace I suggest you use is the design workspace. And if you're working on your own copy of CC, you should be able to set that once and it'll probably be that way all the time. Sometimes the design workspace is very wide. I suggest you make it a little bit narrower here. Okay. Um, otherwise, let's go ahead and go and talk about some of the settings that you have to have to go through. And then I will leave you to do the rest of the tutorial probably yourself. A common mistake when working with Dreamweaver is to just go ahead and make a new page without defining your site. We use something called site definition, which is a way to tell Dreamweaver to keep track of all your files and folders. You'll see all these recent files here. These are other site definitions uh, setups I have already had. Once you do site definition once, if it's on your own computer, uh, you will be able to then see your project over here and be able to just double click on it and begin again. But site definition can be done over and over again if you happen to move to other computers or you're working in a lab, for instance. This is how it works. It's going to create a, a, a link to a local folder, which is your root folder. Um, so here's how we would start. This is how we would start any project. Um, we're going to go to site, new site, which sounds 
like it's creating something new, but it's really just making keeping track of the root folder is all it's really doing. And the name that's here doesn't matter what you use really. It's not like a real name with for real files. It's just a name for your own organizational purposes. You won't see it doesn't make a file or a folder or anything with this name. So you could name anything you want. You could say I'm gonna call mine uh, Jack Test J U three one seven W B whatever. The key thing is this local site folder. I click on this browse button. I'm going to go find the folder. And I'm actually in the right place, actually, just about. Dream for 2017. And here it is. Actually, no, I have to go. I have to start over again, don't I? I'll go to my drive. I'll go find my Dreamweaver 2017 and my base eye jack. And my base eye jack is that folder. So I say select folder. Okay, we're almost there. We're almost done. In addition to this, this finding the root folder and telling it what the root folder is, we also want to tell it the default images folder. So under advanced settings, we're going to find under local info, default images folder. So it knows where the images are. And there it is. I'll, I'll open it. Or just, sorry, just select it and say select folder. And I've done all the setup I need to. All the other values can be the same. And I will say save. Okay, so now I have, you'll see what one thing that's happened is I have this structure over here. It knows where my images folder is and what the images are. It knows where my style folder is. It knows where my JS folder is. It's keeping track of all those things now. I see my files have shown up in this little files panel over here. These are some of the things we're going to use, the designer. We're going to use that. We use files. Insert, we're going to use for sure. It's how we insert lots of things. Snippets, probably not. CC libraries, probably not. Not in this tutorial anyway, but you can learn more about them. So we see files there. Good. Now we're going to create our first new page. Okay. Um, we're going to create this by going to File New. Okay. New document is good. HTML is good. HTML5 is good. These are probably the same settings that you get, and we'll just say create. Now, this in this design workspace, the default is this split view in which we see what? We see something that looks familiar right down here. This is HTML, right? Just as you would expect. Um, and but we could look at, and up here we see like a view of kind of what the the page will look like, which is blank right now, of course. I could just look at the code alone. I could look at the live view alone. I could look at the split view, the both together, which is what you probably do. Um, right here, we can see that um, we can we have a an unsaved file, right? We can put the title in here. I suggest the title be something like Bayside Beat. and your last name or your name that's good and i'm going to do my first save file save it automatically knows where this is supposed to go this will be called index index.html and i save it and it shows up in my files folder over here and it's my first page already begun it already has a title on it um, at any time right now it's a very boring page I can go and tell it and ask it to preview in a browser and choose the browser. Um, I can I can at any time I get confused or want to look at things differently. I can open up all these files that it creates in Notepad Plus Plus and work on them and come back and work over here. There's nothing special or proprietary about Dreamweaver that it does that you can't do in Notepad Plus Plus, but it's a good way to learn at the same time. So I've I've made the first page. I'm going to leave you there. I give you a brief tour of the software. Um, there's many, many more pages of instructions as you go. Um, and again, if you choose to do this outside of class, after the class is over, and you have problems or questions, I do have a code at different levels I can show you and share with you. Um, and you can simply email me. I'd be happy to work with you on this at another time.